pine trees grow along the valley, defying wind and weather. They look too tall and strong to fear any enemies, but they have a bit of fell in the wood wasp, an insect about two inches in length. With her long egg-laying apparatus, the female wood wasp bores a hole in the tree trunk, as you see her doing now. The finished hole is two or three inches deep, and in it she lays her eggs, long and shining. Each one hatches out into a white grub. The grub lives entirely off wood and spends all its life eating its way about the tree. It has powerful jaws, which you can see at work here, on their business of wood cutting. The grub has a spiky tail with which it packs the digested wood into a solid mess behind it. It bores its way about the tree for two years, and naturally the long tunnels that it makes ruin the timber. After the two years, it stops feeding and lies still for a while. Strengthened by this rest, it changes its shape and becomes a pupa, rather like the ghost of the fly it will eventually become. At first, it is light in color, but it gradually darkens. Here are a couple side by side in the wood, the one on the left older, and darker than the one on the right. From the dark one emerges the grown-up wood wasp, which rapidly tunnels towards the surface of the tree. You can see its old pupa skin discarded in the tunnel behind it. It has a grim struggle through the wood, but at last it climbs out into the open air. Eggs laid in the tree by the same parent usually hatch out at about the same time. Here comes another. And another. The holes they make in the surface of the wood are nothing compared with the ruin they have caused inside by tunneling. Fortunately, this yearly damage to the timber is being checked by the work of British scientists. For years, they have studied the wood hampered by the fact that most of its life is spent in the heart of the trees. They have discovered that the wood wasps can be destroyed by a parasite which attacks the grubs and kills them. This parasite is bred in British laboratories and is dispatched to play empire where the wood wasps The parasite is sent as an adult insect, packed in gels in moss. The parasite, which is a winged insect called Rissa, is liberated among the trees. Rissa feels carefully over a pine tree trunk to find out if a wood wasp grub is tunneling below. How she knows we cannot tell. But evidently, she has found one, for she whips her egg-laying apparatus out of its cover and with it drills a hole down through the solid timber to the wood wasp's grub below. In this picture, the drill is deep in the timber and the cover is sticking out behind. If you look carefully at the bottom of the tunnel, you will see that the Rissa stabs her victim with the egg-laying drill. Now. And again. 
She does this to inject an anesthetic so that the grub lies still while the egg is laid on it. Once the egg is laid, Rissa restores the egg laying drill into its cover and has a good tidy up. Then she sets out in search of another victim. Down inside the heart of the tree, the egg of the Rissa lies on the wood wasp grub. It is round with a long tail coiled about it which contains extra nourishment for the young Rissa within. Here you see the egg very highly magnified and already the jaws of the young insect are formed. Those black curved things on the left. When fully developed, the young Rissa grub leaves the egg. It can eat only one food, wood wasp grub, and ample meals for its whole lifetime are at hand. It crawls over its helpless victim, seeking for a good place to attack it usually between the folds of the skin so that the wood wasp cannot crush it against the sides of the tunnel. Nature has arranged that one wood wasp grub supplies just enough food to last the time which the rissa itself spends as a grub. Here you see the rissa half grown and the dead wood wasp half gone. A close-up shows that Rissa at this age looks very dignified and rather like a judge. Here the Rissa grub is full grown and the wood wasp is all gone. Only an empty shell remains. That wood wasp grub will never go up to attack trees. Rissa now changes into a pupa. It darkens in colour and before long turns into the grown-up rissa which begins to emerge through the surface of the wood. Long legs and long feelers make getting out rather difficult. After tremendous efforts, Rissa emerges and flies off. The pine trees and the fir trees stand all down the valley, each one a witness to the victorious war waged by the Rissa family in alliance with mankind against the tribe of the wood wasps.